top uh, for the running for a Nobel Prize in economics and is amongst the top economists in the world. Such a pleasure to have Robert Schiller here speaking to us uh, in Davos for NDTV. Professor Schiller, let me begin with the fact that you see the economic growth recovery taking place. We've heard Mario Draghi uh, talking about Europe picking up, second half looking good. Christine Lagarde spoken about it. All the corporate leaders seem to suggest, listen, Eurozone crisis is over. The world is a better place. Well, if I were in Mario Draghi's position, I would probably say the same thing. <laughs> because whatever he says has such a big impact on confidence. I tend to speak my mind. That's why I'm not in Mario Draghi's position. <laughs> So I'm a little bit less upbeat than that. Uh, it seems like we've seen slowdowns in a lot of parts of the world, in the U.S., uh, notably Europe, and then also China and India. And I think this reflects a, um, a, a sort of a loss of, a weakening of confidence that, m that might be protracted. It might not, there might not be a brilliant recovery in the next few years. But you don't see that crisis overhang taking place, do you, in, when you talk about the European Union? Well, I think the European Union is still unsettled. They're in recession. Lots of people are unemployed. They're angry. There's, there's a dispute about how the national debts should be resolved. And we have a bailout program from the European Central Bank. But it's a bailout program, and, and people are... It's hard to predict. It's a volatile situation. But I'm hearing so many positive comments coming in from the global growth recovery side. And the fact that even United States people say, listen, deficit is not a problem. The U United States does not have a deficit problem, which was much feared. I think that they, people exaggerate the deficit problem and underemphasize the unemployment problem. And so the U.S. economy is underperforming. And we should really be doing aggressive infrastructure investments, things in, in improving social conditions and environment. And that, that's something we can do. The government can borrow at a negative real interest rate. They should go for it. Okay, they should go for it, but when they're going for it, the housing market, which is the key problem, and which you so correctly have predicted multiple number of times, and of course the case Shiller index as well. But the housing market seems to have picked up of late, and everyone's talking about a growth re revival there. You seem to disagree. Well, I think it will go up for a while, a short while. But I think that, you know, uptick like this doesn't mean a whole lot for the longer run outlook. Uh, you know, I think the housing prices have come down to a normal, reasonable level. So, you know, maybe nothing will happen in the housing market for the next five years. That's, a, an That's not a bad thing? Nothing is well, actually, not a bad thing? Yeah, I mean, I think we've overemphasized housing. We shouldn't be building big, giant houses for wealthy people. We should be dealing with our crime problem, with, with people who are in and out of jail, and they get out of jail, nobody helps them. We have children who are not being educated. There's so many things that we should be spending money on and, and have people sitting idly. We should fix that. Okay, and this is something which is interesting because you've talked about housing market, you've talked about stock markets in your previous books and your research yeah. work, and now what you're talking about is almost financial inclusion. Right. Uh, there's a lot of conversation here in Davos about wealth accumulation, how there should be taxes on the super rich, tax avoidance is something that the UK Prime Minister also uh, spoke very strongly against. Well, I have advocated in my writings not raising taxes on the rich immediately, but setting in motion a plan for taxes to be raised in the future if inequality gets worse. I don't know if there's any country in the world who has ever had such a plan. And it just astonishes me to think that there is no plan. With the rise of internet, computers, automation, we might see, and other factors, we might see increasing inequality. I want to talk about a plan now to and a plan that, that you are right raises taxes on the on the rich, but it won't be so bad if it comes gradually and it comes as inequality gets worse. So it doesn't stop the uh, growth in the recovery. Uh, that's what a lot of people say when you talk to corporate leaders and business leaders and even the Republicans. Uh, you know, right. in that entire debate, they say, "Listen, why are you putting brakes on the recovery if you're raising taxes on the rich?" Even India is going through some of that kind right. of a decision dilemma. Well, we have to have a system that rewards excellence. So we have to let people get rich. We just don't want to get crazy about that. So, I, yeah, I, I want an economy with billionaires, people who 
found some important new enterprise and it's successful, it's fine with me and, and with everyone else if they become a billionaire. But let's not go, we don't want them to become 10 billionaires or 100 billionaires. And so we have to start setting limits. Okay, uh, let's move on to some criticism coming in, or not really criticism, but a difference of opinion from Mark Faber, who said that I don't agree with Schiller's comment on going positive on the U.S. dollar. He said, I'll keep my gold, you keep your U.S. dollar, we'll see which goes to zero first. I was actually uh, remarking, uh, Mark Faber was asking the audience, who here holds gold? And he was astonished that very few of these professionals held gold. And I said to him, you didn't ask the parallel question. How many of you are short gold, predicting it's going to go down? And I think, you know, it, it has a good, this is a bubble in gold. It has a good chance of correcting downward. So gold is a bubble right now in the waiting. Well, see, there's no way to quantify this or prove this. It's a matter of judgment. It has been an amazing run with gold. But the risk that anyone has coming in to buy gold now is that they're coming in at the end, at the end of a bubble. It's a famous story. It happens to millions of people. You finally hear about it when it makes you the last person who bought at the highest price. That's what I would worry about. Now. And how much of a correction could take place or a collapse in the commodity in, in terms of percentage from these levels? I mean, oh, how much? It could be down 70%. 70%. Well, you're asking me to quote a number. I don't have a number. Right. But, but uh, we, we just saw a big drop in housing prices in the U.S., and I was skeptical then. I'm skeptical about gold now. But the problem is you can't predict exactly when this thing might happen. But that's exactly why I wanted the world to pay more attention to your comments. You've got it right every single time. You got it right in 2000 when yeah. the stock market collapsed. You got it right before the Lehman financial crisis and when you talked about the housing market bubble. And then when you're talking about a gold bubble, it is time for us to really pay attention to that. The only problem, you talk about these past times when I predicted corrections down. I never felt confident or comfortable I felt like I was using my intuitive judgment and I couldn't prove anything I was saying. And I finally came out with these statements only out of a sense of moral, you know, integrity that if I think this, I guess I should say it. No, and, I, and, and it worked well for those who were listening. Yeah, but I could be very wrong. I, I, I just, we don't know the future. In fact, you have a lot of people pretending they know the future and it's fundamentally uncertain. It's just a gut, that's the problem with Economics is not an exact science, and it never will be. No, but it's great to hear people like you admit to that because many would not and be uh, very stuck on their beliefs. Let me just get to stock markets for a quick moment because stock markets seem to be shrugging off any economic concern. You're talking about still some remaining problems in the housing side, in Eurozone, uh, the move back in terms of austerity and structural reforms. But wh what's happening in stock markets? They, they don't the stock seem, market. In the stock markets, they don't seem to care. Uh, yeah, the stock prices are relatively high right now. Uh, the stock market is always a puzzle. It doesn't, it doesn't move in lockstep with the economy. You can have, in the Great Depression from 1933 to 1937, there was one of the biggest bull markets in history, right in the middle of the Depression. So the fact that we're in an economic depression doesn't prove anything. So I think that, I, I, I personally think the stock market is a reasonable investment now. Uh, the, the, in, the Indian and the U.S. stock market have behaved very similarly. Indian stock market has been weak relatively lately. Maybe India is even a better bet. I, I, I might put more money in India. Oh, so India is a better bet, and you've been there last uh, few months. You visited India, actually. Right. What do you make of this? Because a lot of Indians themselves are saying, we're not too happy with the way growth is playing out. We're not too happy with the way reforms have played out so far in India. There's been a late push by the government, but not enough. Well, I'm generally impressed with what's happened ever since Manmohan Singh became a factor in the Indian scene, that they are growing fast. And I don't see any reason to doubt that that, that will continue. So you think that Indian growth uh, in the short term might be a little slower, but long term it's a great bet? Right, and India is is uh, following an economic inclusion path with their new ID cards uh, that they're giving for everyone in India, and that's an that puts India at the outer edge of the most advanced <laughs> country. 
uh, and so I, I think that your government is doing a lot of good things. It, so in many ways, when, you, when you're saying that you might invest in India, you're seeing Indian stock markets cross record highs from here on. We are in a bull market, then you're saying. We could be in a bull market right now. The, the problem with India is that in the last uh, few years, it has just tracked the U.S. market, more or less. So the important thing is not to invest in one country to, to diversify, not in one kind of asset. So when I said, I'm thinking of putting more money into India in my personal account, that doesn't mean a whole lot. I'm just saying I'm diversifying, and it's gotten a little cheaper in India, so maybe I'll move a little bit more in. But can I say the larger message that Robert Shula is playing out there seems to be one of financial inclusion, but the fact that housing still has some way to go in terms of recovery in the United States. Equities make a good case. Gold does not. That, that's pretty much it, except I, I don't know that housing is going to make a recovery. It's kind of normal. I think that the one trend that we're seeing in the U.S. is a move toward apartment living and renting. And I think that trend might continue. So we'll see more apartments building. But this whole idea that housing is going to drive the economy with new excitement, I don't think that is in the cards right now. It might happen, but it's, I don't see it. Professor Schiller, such a fascinating insight. Thank you so very much for speaking with us here in Davos. Fascinating getting that opinion across. And we're getting you live coverage right here from the Congress Center in Davos. That was Robert Schiller making a very strong case. Remember, he is in the running for a Nobel uh, Prize as well in economics, but saying that there could be a possibility of a gold bubble burst as much as 70%, though he doesn't want to put a number uh, on it. Uh, he's grinning while I'm speaking about that. But nonetheless, that's a real possibility right now. India's number one news app just got even better. Download NDTV's new app, fully optimized for retina display, full screen view, faster response time, and Sudoku. NDTV's new iPad app. Download now.